These days a lot of CGI is used for car advertising and not only in videos but also as stills, for example for brochures or descriptions of manufacturer websites. There is a huge variety of software which can be used for this purpose and Unreal Engine recently is not falling behind and became widely used for automotive visualization. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are there for the first time, I'm lead Unreal Engine artist working in post-production company and mostly focused on automotive CGI and animations. And in today's video I will share a few tips on how to make photorealistic stills for automotive visualization using HDRI and path tracing and post-process settings. We will create scene and light it using HDRI backdrop and set post-process settings. We will create cameras in cinematic, render still frame and add some final touches in DaVinci Resolve. Also during the video I will share you the resources I use for HDRI and all of it will not cost you a single penny. Let's get started. I will start with short intro to HDRI backdrop in Unreal Engine. HDRI is 360 degrees cube map which engine can interpret as source of light based on brightness of the image. For almost every shot of my Bronco video I used HDRIs for lighting of each scene and getting desired mood. Same way I light my scene in Unrecord breakdown. It just gives natural feeling to the light and allows you to get high quality result very fast. Basically it is just like a cheat code which allows you to light your scene very fast. Now let's try it. So here I have my project and I have created a new empty level called HDRI tutorial. It is completely empty. Before we start creating the scene we need to make some changes to our project settings. Click project, project settings, go to engine, rendering tab. Scroll down to Hardware Ray Tracing and enable if it is not enabled. Also enable Path Tracing if it's not enabled yet. After that navigate to Settings, Plugins. And look for Movie Render Q plugin. In my case it's already enabled, but if you didn't have it enabled, Unreal will ask to restart the project. Do so and wait for shader compilation. When it is done we start with a basic scene creation. Click on Add button and select Light HDRI Backdrop. Nice, we have already have some scene and light in it with one click. For this example I will be using HDRI that I have downloaded from polyhaven.com. It has a lot of free assets which you can try yourself. I click on this texture I have downloaded and imported. And in HDRI Backdrop Details panel I click on this arrow button so I will apply a recently selected texture. It is high quality 8K texture, so it already looks good. One disadvantage of HDRI maps that you are heavily limited with angles you can use, so it will look proper. I'm setting my camera at the point of view where it looks the best. This one looks fine, I believe. After that, I am adding post process volume to balance exposure. When I add it to the level, first thing I need to expand its bounds to affect the whole level, so I check the box Infinite Extent. Change exposure methods to manual and set compensation to 9.5. It gives nice high contrast look to my taste. At this point you can add any of your car models and it will probably look good with the past tracing. Here I'm placing model of Volvo S19 which I think will look good in this setting. Now I change view mode to path tracing and adjust camera and car position. It already looks great. So this is a basic setup which you can use. It was just a demonstration how that works. You can combine HDRI maps with Megascans assets like I did in my Bronco video or with road spline and trees like in my McLaren Elva. But now let's talk about adding a little bit of animation and setting up the renders. I have deleted all of the actors except post-process volume and I will add another HDRI map but from CGI backgrounds plugin right now. They don't pay me, it's not a promotion, CGI Backgrounds has free plan which I am using. And it has some nice motion blur the HDRIs. You can use their asset just same way as usual Unreal Engine Backdrop, if you download the texture, or if you install the plugin, you can choose assets from your CGI Backgrounds library and add them to Unreal with expert button, just like I'm doing it right now. Same as in a previous example, I have prepared this scene. 
I didn't delete post-process volume as I mentioned, because it already has the exposure settings that I like. For this scene I will use Toyota Supra, just like on the thumbnail of this video. If I place it in the center, it already looks pretty cool. For car materials, I'm using Unreal Engine Automotive Material Pack, which is available for free in Unreal Engine Marketplace. It contains all what you need for shading of the car. Let's tweak some post-process settings right now. Just like in my previous example, I have my exposure set to manual and compensation to 9.5. Now we need to change bloom settings type from standard to convolution. Convolution gives us more realistic results when light is reflected from metal materials, car paint or chrome, creating these beautiful flares. Personally, I find them better looking. Next thing in post-process settings is the lens flares. I always turn it way down to 0.1 as I don't like very obvious light flares they tend to spoil the shot, so I try to keep them down and change bokeh shape to default one. Now let's set camera, segments and render settings. Click add cinematic camera. Well, now when depth of field was introduced it looks even better. Here I'm setting the angle right now, looking for the best spot. I decided to go with 16mm lens to make it wider and also go full open with aperture of f1.2. That will make picture brighter, so I would need to adjust post-process exposure compensation again. Something like 7 looks good. We still see details in the clouds and shadows are deep black. Next I set focus for the car and do minor adjustments to camera position, looking for perfect shot. Now we can create sequence, add a little bit of animation to introduce blur for our wheels and the car itself. In content browser I create new level sequence. At camera I have created to the sequence, fix position a bit. Now I'm adding car to the sequence and adding transform track for it. The idea is basically make the car feeling that it's accelerating and overtakes the camera, passes it, not at the exact same speed between the camera and the car. So I will add a bit of movement to the car itself, driving straight. We'll do so by creating a keyframe at the beginning of the sequence, move the car a bit closer and keyframe its position. Then move like 14 to 13 frames forward, change car position and also make a keyframe. Make them all linear as I don't want smooth acceleration or braking. I need the car move at constant speed even for this small distance of couple of meters. Now I will add some wheel rotation but very very slow because we will be using a lot of sub samples for the render to get the proper motion blur and we don't want our wheels completely like blown away. Right now I am using my control rig to make wheels rotate and if you would like to know how to build simple car rig you can watch my tutorial by clicking here in the top right corner or by following the link in the description. Also I have some more videos about Unreal Engine and car animation on my channel so you can check it out too. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more Unreal stuff. Now back to the video. So what do we have here? Car moving forward and wheels rotating, camera is set, animation is done. Let's add the final touch before the render, which is camera shake. Right click in content browser and select blueprint class. Look for camera shake base. Give it a name. In my case it's camera drive. Open it, close it and open again. I don't know why it still has this bug, but it just how it works. In root shake part and choose Berlin noise camera shake. Set time into zero, which means infinite, as we need constant camera shake for the whole duration. For this shot we only need location on Z axis, set amplitude something around 3 cm and frequency something around 15. Hit compile and save. Basically it will give us something like a small 
shake, which is like the vibration which transfers to the sensor from the body of the car when driving on an uneven road. In the sequence, add track to cinema camera actor, select camera shake and choose the blueprint you have just created. You can see now how it looks on timeline by previewing it. While it's all done, let's set up the render. Click Window, Cinematics, Movie Render Queue. Here we will delete everything, as we don't need it in these settings. We are going for the best quality for finishing in DaVinci Resolve. Select EXR Sequence, Path Tracer Renderer, Game Overrides to give best quality to our shadows and materials. Anti-aliasing to get more samples and better quality motion blur. Set sample count to 32 by 32 and enable override anti-aliasing checkbox. It will give us in total 1024 samples and less noisy result. In past tracing, select reference motion blur. In my opinion, it looks more realistic than the usual that engine provides. Now let's pick a frame. As we are doing only one still, in output tab, check custom playback range. I will pick 8 to 9 frames which will give me a total of one frame. Accept and hit Render Local. This scene is very simple and it will not take a lot of time to render. Now let's input our render into DaVinci Resolve. Upon input, you might notice that our frame doesn't look like it was in Unreal Engine, because when exporting, it uses different color space in Gamma. By default, Unreal uses sRGB and Linear Gamma. To fix it, navigate to Color tab and in effects library, to the right, look for the color space transform. Drop it on the node graph and change input and output color space and gamma as shown on the screen. sRGB linear to Rec 709. Now it looks properly and you can do the color grading. If you are good in Photoshop, you can use the same approach there, it's just a matter of preference which software to use for grading and finishing. I'm mostly experienced in Resolve and it's software of my choice. I add some final touches to my render and finally, I'm happy to provide you with the final result. I think it looks really great and very close to reality. Feel free also to play around with the camera angles in Unreal Engine afterwards and try different shots for this. As I mentioned, this approach most commonly used for websites and commercial stills for car advertising by a lot of automotive manufacturers. For example, right now I am receiving some automotive visualization requests and client specifically asks for Unreal Engine. That means there is a demand on the market and you can create some nice results really fast and even compete in this market using just Unreal Engine. There are some downsides of this approach, which are limitation of camera angles and hardly any room for animation if you want to drive the car or drift. But nevertheless, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.